Hello, everyone, and welcome to our interview with Kelly Yang, author of Front Desk. This book is this year's community pick for the Lewiston Auburn Read. And I'm Sarah Turner, children's librarian for the Lewiston Public Library in Maine. Kelly Yang is the number one New York Times bestselling author of the Front Desk series. Front Desk is Kelly's award-winning middle grade debut novel about a 10-year-old Chinese American immigrant girl who manages the front desk of a motel while her parents clean the rooms. Kelly immigrated to America when she was six years old and grew up in Southern California, where she and her parents worked in three different motels. She eventually left the motels and went to college at the age of 13 and law school at the age of 17. Whoa. And she's a graduate of UC Berkeley, where she majored in political science and Harvard Law School. After law school, she gave up law to pursue her passion of her writing and teaching creative writing to children. She is the founder of the Kelly Yang Project and a leading writing and debating program for kids in Asia. She's a writing teacher, for, she's been a writing teacher for 13 years, and she's helped thousands of children find their voice and become better writers and more powerful speakers. And she has three children and lives in Los Angeles. And with a dog, I think, too, right? The dog? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> and so I'm so excited to talk with you today, Kelly. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'm so excited as well. All right. So I'm just going to jump right into questions. Uh, so like Mia Tang, you came to the United States as a kid. What was that experience like for you? Oh, it was it was so much fun. It was also really intense. And I was worried about speaking English. And I didn't really know the language before I came over. So that first year was very hard for me. Um, but it was also so exciting because it was a new country. I met a lot of new friends, uh, especially once we started working in the motel. All right. Uh, is there anything that happened in the book that happened to you in real life? working in three different motels. Yeah, so I always say that the book is about 60% real and 40% made up. Um, so there are lots of scenes that really happened, including the Lucky Penny scene. My dad um, is obsessed with pennies and coins and stamps and anything collectible, uh, but especially coins because we had a vending machine. And so he'd be able to get um, a lot of coins that way. And we would also recycle all the time. So I remember that was a huge part of my childhood, just trying to find that, you know, 1942 or whatever it was. <laughs> Do you still have those pennies? You know, amazingly, he does. He still has a whole jar of them. I don't think he ever did anything with them. Um, but it was really funny because uh, one time our house unfortunately got broken into. And when we came home and everybody else was worried about, you know, their laptop or this or that. And he was like, my jar. <laughs> and luckily they didn't take the jar. So. <laughs> oh, good. Good. It was like hidden, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so also in the book, Mia forms a found family with the weeklies, her friend Lupe and her parents. Were there people that became a found family for you? Yes, absolutely. Um, my found family was at the library, believe it or not. I am a I am a walking, um, you know, living proof of the power of libraries. My parents would always take me to the library, and then I started riding my bike to the library by myself. And I formed a little family at the library, especially with um, John Simon, who was our librarian at the Anaheim Public Library, and he really, um, he really nurtured me and nurtured my love for reading. I love that. I love that. Were there people in your life who tried to discourage you from some of your dreams? I mean, I think that one of the problems was growing up in that time. I didn't see a lot of books like Front Desk, and I didn't see a, I didn't see any books with um, an Asian American girl on the cover, and I rarely saw anybody um, on the back of the cover like the author who looked like me. So that made me very discouraged. That made me wonder whether or not I was um, able to do this dream. 
But I soon realized that just because you can't see it doesn't mean you can't be it. And I worked really hard. And I and as I got older, I realized that there's so many other people out there also fighting for their dreams. Um, and I'm really excited to um, share a whole bunch of them in my latest picture book called Yes, We Will. And it comes out in a few weeks. Yes, we are going to have it here at the Lewiston Public Library. It's already been ordered. <laughs> So Mia faced bullying and discrimination in the book. What advice do you have for kids struggling with these today? So my advice for people who are struggling with bullying or discrimination is don't be afraid to speak up. Um, you would be amazed at how much um, love and support there is just among your peers, among teachers, trusted adults. Um, also know that you're not alone. So many people have been going through the same thing, which is why it's so important to talk about it. And we don't we don't just keep sweeping it under the rug. Um, and finally, you know, find that friend, whether it's just one friend or it could be the friend in a book. Um, I moved around a lot as a kid and I didn't always have that best friend, but I would always go to the library and picking up some books. It really feels like, you know, you're picking up um, home. You know, and just you can feel that love. And feeling that relationship to characters and knowing that if they're going through the same thing as you are can Absolutely. be really helpful. Absolutely. Mia compares her experience of the class system in America to a roller coaster. Do you think that roller coaster still exists? And what can be done to remedy that, do you think? Yeah, I definitely think the roller coaster still exists. Um, the fact that we have so many, you know, legacy admissions in there, a lot of private schools, a lot of elite colleges, is evidence that we have this roller coaster where certain people have um, an advantage because their dad went to that school or their granddad went to that school, and it just kind of goes on and on and on for that family. That said, it is possible to um, jump roller coasters. I think. And I am an example of that. You know, I think that there's a lot of tools in your library, again, which are all free <laughs> that you can take advantage of. And in this country, I do believe that there is still a lot of opportunity. Wonderful. Uh, so I did see that this book was challenged in a school district and it was an attempt to ban it in, from being used in a classroom. So what are your thoughts on book challenges and writing for middle grade audience today? Yeah, um, this has been very disheartening. It's something that um, I face, but not only me, lots and lots and lots of other authors, um, a lot of people of color, LGBT uh, community have faced this. And I think that one of the most important things we have to remember is um, we're trying to prepare kids for the future, right? And the future is made up of lots of different people. It's a very diverse future. That's a fact. You know, it's not something we can pretend is not true. We just have to go and look at the Census Bureau. You know, this country is full of um, immigrants. It's full of different people from different walks of life. And if we want our kids to have a chance at having a good future, knowing how to interact with people, that's the kind of, um, that's the kind of tools that they need, that those books are actually tools that you want to give them in a toolbox. And, you know, I think that the bigger a toolbox you have, the more prepared you are for that future. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so as the founder of the Kelly Yang Project, leading a writing and debating team uh, in Asia, do you have any advice for aspiring young writers? Yes, absolutely. Um, so my biggest tips are, number one, to read, read, read. Um, you cannot be a Good writer, if you're not a big reader, you don't have to be the best reader. I was not the best reader. I, I've never been the best reader. Um, there's lots of books that I just, they're too hard for me. You know, they were too hard for me growing up and sometimes they're still too hard for me. But I was always a big reader in that I was able to find a book that I loved and I devoured that book. And then I read more and more and more books. And I really believe that there is a book for everyone in the library. Um, so I want you to be a big reader. And then number two is that I think that people should treat writing like it's a sport, you know, and we know as athletes that um, it's really important to, to flex that muscle to practice. Um, it's the same thing with writing. So if you can try to write a little bit every day. That's definitely great advice. Writing every day and reading. I love it. 
Um, so what is something you hope kids will take away after reading Front Desk? I hope people take away that, you know, people come from all different parts of the world, but really we're pretty similar. You know, we want some of the same things. We just want a chance to have a good life for our families. Um, and even if you look at Mia and Jason, they are two kids from two totally different parts of town, you know, very different backgrounds, different levels of privilege. But they also want the same thing. You know, they just want to be kids. They want to go for their dreams. They want some, you know, some attention from their parents once in a while. And I really want kids to read this book and realize, wow, you know, there's a lot of common commonalities here. There's a lot of similarities. And, and maybe I can talk to um, someone who I would normally, you know, have a conversation with. But we can use this book as a conversation starter and form that bridge and form that bond. Great. Um, so growing up, uh, what was a book that you treasured? Okay, so my favorite book growing up, let me see if I have it. Yes, is uh, was Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. This was one of my favorites. It was so great because uh, it's also a just gripping read. It's about this family and they're going through a lot of turmoil. But it, it's so, um, it just, it sucks you in. It's so inspiring. And it, and it was, it felt so important, yet it was like a complete page turner. So I love that book. Um, I also read a lot of series. I read a lot of Babysitter's Club. I read a lot of Goosebumps <laughs> as a kid. Oh, definitely. Goosebumps all the way. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I was like scared of Goosebumps. Yeah. I remember read. I remember like, oh, I want the next one. I have to get it. And then just going, am I ready? Can I handle it? I'm just going to do like one page. Oh, it's too scary. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So uh, what, do you, what do you find or where do you find fulfillment outside of writing? I love taking walks with my dog. Um, I love going on hikes. So luckily I live outside of Los Angeles, right outside. So I have a lot of access to like trails and things like that. Um, I love, you know, reading obviously, and then just, you know, hang out with my family. All right. And last question, uh, what is next for you? So I'm working on more middle grade. Um, I am super excited that this is my latest book called new from here. This just came out and it's a, also a middle grade book, but it takes place in present day in this crazy pandemic that we're going through because believe it or not, I actually moved back to the U.S. during the pandemic with my kids <laughs> from Hong Kong. So that was a wild journey. Um, lots of ups and downs. Also very hilarious moments like running out of toilet paper, which I think we all remember. <laughs> so yeah. if you're interested in what my family today is like and what we're going through, then you should definitely check that out. Yes, and we, it is available for checkout at the Lewiston Public Library where you can come grab, take, uh, grab, check it out and take it home and read it. Uh, so we've just, just so inspired by this book and Mia's story uh, in the cities of Lewiston and Auburn. Um, and, you know, she fought for her friends and found a way to help everyone, which I really loved. Um, and I don't want to spoil the ending for anyone who hasn't gotten there yet, but it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Uh, and there are two sequels. So there is Three Keys and Room to Dream. And there is a fourth book coming out uh, in September. In September, So Mia's adventures continue. So uh, know that there's another one coming out. Thank you so much for your time and answering all of my questions today. I really appreciate it. It was such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for reading my books. It really means the world to me. And I hope one day I get to see you all in person. Oh, we would love that. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you.